Hello everyone, Basic Ollie here. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another GT Sport video. We have round four today of this season, this season's, I should say, manufacturer series. We're in the Mercedes, as you all know. We have 297 points up for grabs for the person, the lucky boy or girl that gets P1. So let's jump straight into qualifying then. We're at Blue Moon Infield Speedway. So this is really really good if you have a car with excellent top end um, and it's also very good actually if you've got a car with good handling in the um, midfield section as well so it's a well balanced track to say the least so qualifying then as always in GT Sport it's always good to get some slipstream some suck and I decided to latch on on the back of the Greekman here um, I'm not even going to try and pronounce the name because you know how good my pronunciations of names are. I will just absolutely nail it and you'll all be very jealous of how I say the name. But anyways, as we go through the infield section, you can really see that Toyota FT1 is just so nimble uh, and I'm struggling slightly to keep up with it with the old Mercedes, the Chungus, that is the Mercedes. Very good, uh, well-balanced car, but in the infield, that Toyota really is um, its quite something. There's a rear steps out on me there, having to let go of the throttle a little bit just to try and, try and tame the beast as we uh, try and get a nice exit here into the last corner, just breaking off the 100 meter board, you see the kerb appear on the right hand side and just really focus on that exit and making sure we don't clip the inside of the wall because otherwise your qualifying time is completely ruined and speaking of qualifying times, this is going to be an absolutely mega time because we've had the suck all lap so what's it going to be, it's going to be a 106.6 and I am pole baby, I am pole by just over a tenth, and we stay there. We ruddy stay there, ladies and gentlemen. I I am pole. Just just take a picture. You look at it. Look at it. I actually am pole. It, it, honestly, if you didn't see this video, you wouldn't believe me. But I am actually a pole. 106.6. That is. Oh, that's a good time. That is a good time. I don't think I could have done any better there. But we're going to start on pole. But. The only thing I would say is we're starting on pole on a racetrack really where it is incredibly difficult to break the slipstream. We know the slipstream, slipstream length is three quarters of a second and that is very, very difficult to do when you've got a massive straight. Um, so we're going to have to do our absolute best here to try and break away from the pack. But we do have a very, very fast driver behind us in TPC Slow Captain. So fast, in fact, I didn't actually believe how fast he was. But you're going to see in this video... Um, we've got to give props to the man, because he was on top of his game, to say the least. So let's get this first lap underway. We go through the first corner, we go through the second corner here. Um, nice and smooth, no issues, a little bit tentative. The tyres are cold, and I was, I've got to be honest, I was a little bit cold as I go through the infield section. I was i was nervous. Um, I wasn't cold, sorry, I was, I was nervous. Uh, and I just kind of want to make sure I kept myself in P1 for this lap. You can see I missed the apex. Uh, of this tight right hand as we go under the bridge and again the rear is still not quite there and the car does step out on me once more hit the apex here which is uh, what you want to see and then I'm just trying to eye up my breaking point for here so we touch the curb and then we slow down but you can see the rear is still not quite there and as I fling the car into the corner uh, it does step out on me slightly and that does cost me a little bit of time so this is what I mean I haven't got that three quarters of a second and TPC slow captain was on it straight away so, unfortunately, we're not even going to be able to lead one lap of this race. But that's purely, you can see on the track, I decide to let him go. I let go of the frost or let him go past um, because he has, he does have very good pace. And I wanted to play this smart, you know. I wanted to do the right thing. There's a chance for a win here or a podium. We've got to, we've got to play it smart. Now, as we go through the infield section once more, I still don't believe I'm fulfilling my potential. I'm so tentative. I'm so nervous. Uh, of trying to protect, well, of trying to get a win here, um, I actually get the uh, the Dutchman GT actually goes into the back of me, so I'm going that slow uh, in the infield section. So I really need to step up my game here if we're going to have any chance of winning this race. So I just got to concentrate, get my head down, and see if I can stick with TPC TPC slow captain here, um, and yeah, just see if we can actually get a win. God, my goodness, my. My lord, would I love a win as we tap the wall on the outside. And I'm not going to get it that way. I really am not going to get it. And that was so, so close to messing it up. I have to be within three quarters of a second. So this third lap then, 
as we cross the line to complete lap two, it's got to be a good one. 107.6 is nowhere near good enough to win this race. So we are breaking into this very, very awkward left-hander. Two wheels on the kerb, accelerating as you clip the inside of the kerb, almost hitting the ball on the outside black corner there. Breaking up 100 meter board, and yeah, I, lo I loved clipping the kerbs uh, in the infield section. It just felt so good. So, so good when you get it right. And this is so, so much better. You can see through the first sector, I was like almost four temps up. It's so much better. Um, I just decided to push uh, and just don't worry about it too much and just do what you can. And uh, that's essentially what I did. And you can see already I'm straight up the back of TPC slow captain. So this is already a far, far better lap. This Ferrari, by the way, in front of me. I didn't realize how good the Ferrari was here. Uh, take nothing away from the driver. Um, but it's so good at exit speeds. I could not believe how quick it got out of those corners. It was astonishingly good. So I was extremely jealous. There's not many times I pick a Ferrari. Um, at the Group 3 one anyways. In any race, especially with tyre wear. But this one, oh, absolute corker. So you can see a 107 flat there. So much better. So, so much better. Uh, and decide to just uh, tap TBC Slow Captain there. Um, because I want to work with him in this one. Um, I can see he's got very, very good pace. So if I can work with him and try and pull away, that'd be awesome. However, one lap later, even though I'm still putting in personal bests, th th he was just unbelievably quick. Like He was just so good, and I lost the slipstream as we came out, came out onto the banking section there, or mini banking section. And yeah, that's three quarters of a second were gone, and the time difference as soon as I lost that slipstream was mega. You can see he's done a 106.9, a 106.7 now, with no slipstream. None. That is qualifying pace without the slipstream and GT GT uh, the Dutchman here just takes the opportunity and shoots up the inside into turn one and I just was not expecting it I was not prepared because if I just I knew I'd lost the slipstream but I didn't think uh, someone would attack me into turn one straight away but they did and fair play and they've got P2 so we've gone from qualifying getting ourselves you know on pole and now we've dropped down to P3 within six laps which is thoroughly disappointing but we can't give up yet we can't you know put our heads in the sand we've got to keep going and uh, yeah, we'd, if we just keep plucking away, we could still get something from this race. You never know, um, slow captain might make a mistake as the tyre wear comes in. We know that Ferrari's not good on tyre wear, but talking of mistakes, that's happened once or twice already. I've really got to work on that. I keep going wide, touching that grass, and it ruins my tyres as I exit the last corner, or second to last corner, and go into the banking section here. It really does affect the exit and the corner in speed, so I've got to make sure I nail that. Now I have a decision here, uh, at the start of lap 7 where to overtake this the Dutchman or work with him but I decide to work with him because I still think it's too early on to start fighting now on the end of lap 10 here uh, I just felt like I had the pace on the Dutchman after a while after I got a little bit more confidence in the car um, I decided to overtake him so on lap 11 um, I decided to take lead now on lap 12 just one lap later uh, as we go through the first corner really awkward as the car just kind of gets unstable as the, it, the ground just suddenly goes flat uh, he takes advantage of that uh, and gets the move done on the inside of the corner. And annoyingly, um, the Frenchman in the Corvette here has actually got a position. Now, I do something silly here. I just react too late to the breaking point and I hold my hands up. I knock this guy off the track, but thankfully he does come back on and he doesn't lose too much time. We will see him again. And I did apologize straight after the race and he did accept the apology. So, um, hold my hands up for that one. That was completely my fault. I just did not react uh, quick enough. All right. Now, start of lap 15 here. You can see um, as I go and start lap 16, I've just managed, just managed to uh, overtake uh, the Dutchman here and decide to get that P2 position back. And uh, yeah, we're back up to P2 now. Slow captain here, 3.3 seconds up ahead. So he is uh, living the dream in P1, just cruising away. Well, he's not cruising at that speed. He's um, he's absolutely flying. Uh, insane pace. Incredibly jealous, actually, I was. Uh, I wish I had that kind of pace in this race, but unfortunately, I did not. But we're still in P2, so, you know, best of the rest, shall we say. Now, at this point here, there's a bit of a savage lunge. I'm not really sure what happened there. I think Fento went for a move, and then he loses it on the exit, and he drops down again, and there's a gap of 1.2 seconds. So this is my chance, really, to try and break away, and I thought I was, because, again, you can see personal best in that sector but I ruined the exit um, and I managed to keep keep him out of the slipstream for about four or five laps but unfortunately the Frenchman has amazingly come back so I was really, really pleased to see that actually because I was 
I felt really bad, but it, thankfully he's come back and he's claimed P2, so fair play to him. Going through the first sector once more, you could see another personal best, but I do the most stupidest, silliest of mistakes here to go through the infield section. I cut the corner there, all four wheels over the white line, and I get a half second penalty. And the next lap, I desert, I, well, I don't decide to serve, I have to. Even though it was half second, I lose two positions. That's how close it was. Now, Fento goes for another move up the inside. There is contact uh, with the Aston Martin, but he does get that move done. So he's now up to P3 in the podium position. He is doing very, very well, considering he is the in the Renault RS, which is a bit of a pig in a straight line, but very, very good in the infield section. The grip was mega. He said after the race that it was so much quicker than anyone else in the infield section. It was crazy. And he was getting very frustrated by how, how quick he was in the midfield, but so slow on the straights. Whereas the Aston Martin has the opposite effect. It's very, very quick in a straight line. And you can see just with, with ease, just a bit of slipstream, with a bit of suck. And both myself and GT DVZ overtake the Brit in the Renault and that is me back up to P4 and we are now going to see if we can get ourselves back up to P3 again personal best in the first sector as we get our breaking point ready under the bridge you can see the shadow and the Brit unfortunately just a little bit too late and uh, yeah bit of contact with Aston Martin there but he does the right thing here to be fair he slows down and gives a position back so that was um that was good to see that was good to see he easily could have just knock that guy out of the way and yeah just taking that P3 now we're gonna go uh, on to lap 26 and this is the pace the Renault has by the way he's managed to go around the outside just misses out because he makes a bit of contact with the wall there and a GT manages to get that P3 position back but that's the grip he had he nearly ran, went around the outside on turn one absolutely mega stuff in that Renault I could not believe uh, the cornering grip that thing had absolutely mega so you can see GT is defending his position like his life depends on it uh, and we've got the Brit on the inside and he is looking to do a move and he could just see a little bit of contact there everyone's getting a little bit um, out of shape and the Brit just goes into the side of me I just don't think he he knew I was there I don't think and uh, that is um, I pushed him a little bit wide and that has promoted us back up to P4 now unfortunately you can see the Frenchman in P2 there he's just stretched away a little bit so I don't think we're going to get that P2 at this point. So it looks like it's just going to be an all-out fight for P3. And as we cross the line and enter the penultimate lap, I decide not to really go for it here. Uh, and just to push this um, the Dutchman along, because I thought if we work together, we could just build a big enough gap so I'm not actually doing like a three-way fight on the last lap. But uh, <laughs> it, was not, uh, it was not enough, as you can see, because the guy in the Renault is already in... <laughs> on the back of us on the infield section there's no way we could pull away from him so much late on the brakes so much better into the corners apex speed to everything that Renault was doing absolutely superbly now we've got a decision to make here as we go under the bridge I could potentially go for a move on the inside but we decide to get we decide against it um, we've got one one and a bit laps left let's see let's just save everything we have for the last lap of this race and again I go wide absolutely crucial that I don't do that, and I still do. It's such a stupid mistake to make, but thankfully, it does not cost. It doesn't cost me that much time, and we're about to enter the last lap of the race here. So there is what half a second separating P3 and P5 here. Desperately trying to get his P3, and this guy here is desperately trying to hold on to it. He's he's weaving all over the place on the straight, but he doesn't cover the inside enough. And I'm going to swoop down on the inside in the first corner, get that position, a little bit of a nudge as the lads behind me start fighting as well. But that is going to promote me up to P3 now, and all I have to do is hold on to this now and defend like my life depends on it as we go through the in field section so they just nail the breaking points nail the apexes and just keep an eye on that radar and you can see to here i decided to go to the right so i didn't stick to the outside i was like yeah i've got to defend this inside because that Renault is so quick in the corners but unbelievably the brit here fento is going to go side by side with me he keeps it there and i'm going to have to do the switchback of dreams right which we just about there's a tiniest of gaps and we get it done. We're going to go side by side into the second to last corner as we enter the banking. And he decides to back out of it. And he just about get that P3. Absolutely mega racing there with Fento. And we're going to, it's just basically going to be a slipstream race all the way to the finish line. But the two lads behind me start fighting. And that gives me the opportunity to snatch P3 and run away 
with 272 points. What a race that was in the end. Absolutely mega. I'm telling you, when Gran Turismo get the combinations right, my god, they get them right. Just times one tyre wear on this one. No fuel to worry about. Uh, just really, really good close racing. Absolutely mega. And what a race that turned out to be. So I will take... I'll take a breather. <laughs> and I will take those 272 points and that podium. Shame we couldn't win it, but... We've got to hold our hands up. We just didn't have the pace today. But there's the 272 points, and there is the podium. So, boys and girls, I really hope you enjoyed that race as much as I did. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a like, subscribe if you are new around here, and I'll catch you for the next one. Take care. Ta-da.